So you just finished delivering a 20 minute pitch that you know you nailed. And once you drop the price, you see a bit of hesitation on your prospect's face. And there's a long pause before they tell you, I need to think about it. What do you say in this situation? Do you say, No worries, John. How much time do you need to think about it? Like a fucking loser? I hope not. I mean, even if you do, here's the thing. Like at this point, I've taken well over 500 sales calls and pretty much what I want to do in this video is share how exactly you can go about and handling any objection like a fucking G. Ultimately, my goal with this video is to make it so that by the end of this video, you'll be a killer that can go about and helping prospect make empowered decisions and actually go about and making it so that you can actually get paid more. How to handle any objection. So what exactly is an objection in the first place, right? Well, here's the thing, like an objection only comes up whenever there's a lack of clarity for your prospect on how your solution will help them get to the desired end result. Because one thing you have to understand is that if someone is speaking with you, if someone is on a sales call with you, the reason why they're on that call is because there's a specific end result that they want to reach, which they feel like they aren't at right now. And ultimately your solution is supposed to be that like ship that actually allows them to go from where they're currently at to their desired end result. And if they see like there's certain holes in that ship that may allow water to leak in, then that's pretty much going to be a problem for them. And that's what they're going to see as like an objection. And your goal ultimately as a sales specialist is to make it so that that ship is seen as like as clear as possible with no holes it's like completely dent proof right fully ironed out stacked out and it's going to 100 percent get them to their end result and when it comes to objection there's really only like two types of objections soft objections and hard objections with soft objections these aren't really objections these are like genuine questions about your solution that your prospect has in order to help them understand what exactly they're getting and, um, you know, I see a lot of sales reps, they get these confused with hard objections in which they think that just because a prospect's asking them a certain question about their solution, that's an objection, and that they have to go into, like, some type of objection handle. You don't have to objection handle soft objections, right? You're actually going to lose rapport by doing that. And um, in reality, you just have to answer the fucking question, right? Keep it simple. Now, with hard objections, these are, like, real roadblocks towards a sale that actually must be handled properly. One thing to note as well is you can only handle an objection if a prospect is genuinely interested in your solution, but just lacks a bit of clarity. If they're not interested in your solution, then there's no amount of objection handling that you can do to make them interested. If you get to them to call and there's no interest, there's no desire, then there's no objection handling. They're not interested, right? And, you know, I see a lot of people, they think that like anyone can be sold. Anyone cannot be sold, right? Like, you have to be selective on who exactly you spend your time with as a salesperson. You don't want to try to sell to everyone. And um, when it comes to like hard objections, there are really only four types of objections. There's only four, right? There's only four objections. And I'll be teaching you how exactly you can overcome and solve each one of them. The first one you have is price. If you're selling a solution that like the market truly desires, then this may be one of the most common objections that you will come across as prospects will genuinely be interested in what you're selling, but they just can't afford it, right? They just don't have enough capital in order to actually be able to invest in whatever your solution is. And which, you know, when it comes to like handling a price objection, this is probably one of the easiest objections to handle as it's really a logistical one in which you just, you know, create some form of a payment plan in order to like get them across the finish line. So here's the actual script example. So yeah, I'm giving you script examples as well because I want to make it as easy as possible for you to go out from this video and start making cash ASAP. And a lot of these objection handles have been like inspired from just great sales trainers such as like Cole Gordon and, and Tanner Chittister. So I just want to give, you know, some credit over to them. You get to the end of the sales call and the prospect's like, ah, oh, it's too expensive. I don't have the money. I can't afford it, blah, blah, blah. You know, you'd be like, no problem. So just so I can stay organized on my end, like money aside, is there anything that's keeping you from being less than 100% certain that this is what you need to whatever, the, whatever their desired end result is? If you've done everything properly before this point, right? They'll be like, no, I really want to do it. I just don't know if I can afford it. Or they'll be like, oh, it's too much. It's just, it's, yeah, it's just the price. And then you'd be like, so if I'm hearing you correctly, money aside, you're 100% in. 
And notice how I say money aside, you're 100% in, right? Notice how I use absolutes. Like when you get to the end of a call, you want to use absolutes. Like you want to make it so that it's extremely black or white. It's extremely yes or no. You don't want any middle zone. The worst thing you can get, you can have as a salesperson is middle zone, right? When people tell you, I need to think about it. When people say, oh, reach out to me in two weeks. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I have to talk to my dog. Like all these things are gray zone area that guess what? Take up a lot of time for you. Like I'd rather have someone tell me no than tell me I need to think about it. So if I'm hearing correctly, money side 100% in, you're gonna be like, yes. So then you're gonna be like, most of our clients, they do actually do the full investment upfront, but you know, for certain clients in which they really wanna do it, it's just the money, we can actually break it up. So considering like you're in and it's really just a way to make this work financially, like would you be open to exploring, you know, any type of possibility of that? Then they're gonna be like, uh, how does that look like? And you'd be like, well, it depends. You know, everything is really a customized solution. It's predicated on like what you need. Um, you know, are you open to like having a honest financial conversation? And then they're gonna be like, yeah. Okay, so that's when from there, once once you get the go ahead from there, like having an honest financial conversation, you wanna get all the money that they have. Like you wanna, no, 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 I'll take that back. I don't, wanna, I don't mean it like that, right? Like you wanna, you wanna know how much money they have, right? <laughs> Look, guys, don't go out here taking these people's last dollars. This script will allow you to do that, but don't do that, right? Like, that's not ethical. Really, you want to get how much they have in their savings, their checking, their credit, right? How much they have in total. And once you understand how much they have in total, that's how you can know, like, what type of payment plan you can actually create for them to, like, get them over the finish line. Then you have support. This objection is one of the more, like, real objections in which in certain cases your prospect may have to actually speak to someone such as their wife or the board in order to actually get a decision approved ultimately when it comes down to support you know you want to ensure that like there's zero uncertainty towards your solution you want to get absolute that they're certain about whatever you're selling and ultimately that the only reason why they can't make a decision today is because they have to like speak to some support system so here is an script example right you know, let's say, give them the price, yada, yada, yada. And they're like, oh, I have to talk to my wife, you know, my husband, my dog. Uh, I have to go, you know, clean my shoe. I got to clean my lucky shoe. I have to, I don't know, I have to do 10 push-ups, whatever. You're going to be like, no problem. So what are you going to do if they say no? And then, you know, probably going to be like, well, I wouldn't do it then. Now, you may get a prospect who they'll be like, oh, well, I'll just do it anyways. And you, you'll be like, okay, great. So let's go ahead and just get you started today. You know what I mean? Like, that may happen, right? Like, you know, you may get people who do that. But uh, if they say, like, I wouldn't do it then, you'd ask them, and I guess, what do you think their problem would be? And whatever they tell you is, like, their problem would be, that's really what their objection is. As humans, we don't know what other people are thinking, right? We can only think from our mind. So then from there, that's how you know, like, what the real objection is. So let's say they say, like, oh, they probably think it's too expensive. Then you know it's a price objection. You'd loop them back into um, the price objection handle, right? Let's say they're like, uh, it's a, they don't know if it would actually work for them, like it's an uncertainty one. Then that's when you know like it's an uncertainty objection and you'd loop it back to the uncertainty um, objection, which I'm going to be covering later on. Then from there, if you loop them right and they're still like insisting that they need support, like they're still insisting like, yo, I have to, I have to talk to my wife. Then um, typically, you know like it's real. And how you know an objection is like a real objection versus a smoke screen is if you do like two or three loops and they're still on the same objection, like they're still saying the same thing, right? Then um, typically like it's real. Because smoke screens, people switch up smoke screens, right? They'll be like, oh, I need to think about it. Then they'll be like, I need to talk to my wife. Oh, uh, I don't know if now is a good time, right? They'll, they'll switch it up. But if they continuously say, hey, I need to talk to my wife, I need to talk to my wife, I need to talk to my wife, and all right, it's, okay, go talk to your wife. From there, you can dig further, and this is how you can, like, actually dig further, is you can be like, okay, John, well, let me ask you a question. Like, does your wife, does she know that, like, you're struggling with, you know, not being able to, like, lose weight? And do they know, like, you actually want to improve your situation? Like, do they 100% support you? And then they'll be like, yeah, they know. 
and you can say, okay, then why would they be against you doing something that would actually help you lose weight and look better in front of the mirror and be more confident within yourself? I mean, if the roles were reversed, would you support them? They'd be like, yeah, I would. And you'd be like, okay, then why would this be a problem? And then from there, uh, if they're like, yeah, I guess you're right. And then from there, you'd be like, okay, cool, man. So let's just get you started today then. Sounds fair? And boom, close. If they're still like, oh, I need to talk to my partner, what you can do is you can actually get a refundable deposit, right? Um, always try to get something at the end of the call. You can let them know like, hey, well, let's go ahead and have you put down a refundable deposit because it seems like you're actually interested in our process. Like, it seems like you like what we do. It's just you have to talk to your, you, know, you have to talk to your wife. And if you talk to your wife and she says like, hey, I don't want you to lose weight. I don't want you to get in the best shape of your life. So I, don't, I don't want you to like, become more confident, right? If she says that, then um, just let us know and we'll send you the refundable deposit back. Does that sound fair? Boom. And then from there, you get the deposit. And then you have objection number three, which is I need to think about it. So this objection comes when your prospect is unclear about what exactly they're receiving, which is why you have to get very clear on like what exactly is it that's holding them back from actually making a decision, right? And a lot of times when you have an, uh, I need to think about it, it just comes down to uncertainty. So here's how you can handle that. You be like, okay, cool. Like, no problem. Let me ask you a question, John. Um, do you know what the word deciding means in Latin? They'd be like, uh, no, what does it mean? It means to cut off. So what we have to do today, John, is decide on which feature we're cutting off, right? The future of your dreams or the past of your inactions. Because if you're making no decision, that's still a decision. So... If you're cool with it, man, like, let me walk you through three ways in which you can make a decision today. Is that cool? They were like, uh, yeah, go ahead. You're like, okay, so the first thing, do you think you're more likely or less likely to lose weight working with us? Um, I think I'm more likely. Okay, and do you think that we would actually deliver on what was promised? You'd be like, yeah. Okay, and do you have access to cash? You'd be like, yeah. Okay, so you actually have all the decisions you need to make a decision. Decisions aren't made with time, they're made with information. So if you know those three things, you like have all the information that's required to make an educated decision. So do like, let's go ahead and move you forward today. That sound fair? And um, you know, pretty much from there, that's how you can close the deal. Now, if they say, if there's any like uncertainty to any of these questions, that's pretty much how you know like where the root objection is, right? Like if they're uncertain right here, that means it's uncertainty. If it's right here, then that means it's a cash, it's cash flow, right? It's, you loop back. So when you understand that there's only four objections, you understand that like pretty much you can always loop back to um, just different parts of the actual script right and use like different objection handles to handle like there's different types of objections then last is belief objections they're really just based around fear and which up to that moment you know this prospect has used fear their entire life as a tool to in order to like protect themselves from change right as humans fear is our number one tool that we use in order to protect ourselves fear is what keeps us complacent is what keeps us safe locked up in our little hole and miserable right so what you have to do in this moment is you have to help them realize how their fear is actually holding them back from living the life that they deserve and that they said that they wanted to live. And um, typically you wanna offer like some guarantee beforehand in order to like alleviate the risk, right? So that, you know, you can just add a, a, logical, um, a logical patch to the actual like hole in the ship. So here's the script example. You know, let's say you've done everything, you've handled all their objections, and you're still like, ah, oh, I don't know, I can't, I, don't, I can't do it, ah, ah. Okay, got it. So, John, let me ask you, like, what's the worst thing that could happen, man, if you were to invest five thousand dollars today? Like, dude, what's the worst case scenario? Ah, uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, cool. So, worst case scenario is that you X Y Z da da da. You lose your money. Okay. So let me walk through three things. Um, there's really only three scenarios here, right? The first is you do it and it works, which that's pretty much what we all want, right? The second is you do it and it doesn't work, which 
in that case we literally give you a full refund so you're all good there right now the third is you do nothing and you stay stuck so out of all three things the only one that ensures that you don't move forward is doing nothing so let's go ahead and just move you forward today because there's no risk sound fair enough and um you know from there that's how you close it if they're still you know on the edge you can um go by and asking for a delayed payment some form of a deposit and here's one thing determined with sales you always want to there always has to be a next step upon every call whether that's another meeting whether that's a deposit you always want to push things forward you never want to leave things in that gray zone area because when, when you leave things to the gray zone area ultimately if it's in a gray it's in red right like that's just how it is so this is pretty much like the full guide on how exactly you can go about in handling any objection only four objections that you're going to come across and this is how exactly you can handle each one of them so hopefully then you can take this use this go make some money with this right go close some calls close some deals and if you close a deal with any of these objection handles dude like shoot me a dm um share that with me right like i want to i want to see the wins drop a like subscribe and i'll see you next video